I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about coloracetam, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and possible side effects. Coloracetam is a fat-soluble nootropic in the racetam class of compounds. Coloracetam is much more potent than the original racetam, paracetam. Coloracetam was patented by Mitsubishi Tanabe Pharma in Japan in 2005, making it one of the newest racetam-based nootropics. The patent for coloracetam was later sold to Brain Cells Inc. in San Diego. Brain Cells is a small privately held biopharmaceutical company specializing in developing compounds for the treatment of major depressive disorder, treatment resistant depression, and Alzheimer's disease. Now coloracetam is similar in structure to paracetam. And like all racetam nootropics, it has a pyrrolidone nucleus at its core. The latest clinical research indicates potential for treating depressive disorders and retinal and optic nerve damage. Now, coloracetam is a very strong choline targeting supplement. It boosts your brain's choline conversion to acetylcholine through the high affinity choline uptake process, which increases alertness, attention to detail, and memory. Some research and personal experience shows coloracetam may affect AMPA receptors, making, a potential amp making it a potential ampicine nootropic. Now this would explain the stimulant-like effects without the side effects of traditional stimulants. And coloracetam shows some anxiolytic or anti-anxiety qualities, helping improve mood and quieting anxiety. So coloracetam increases attention span, alertness, and it boosts long-term memory. But coloracetam versus paracetam, what's the difference? Well, paracetam was the original racetam that started the nootropic movement. And it's a cyclic derivative of GABA. It affects the neurotransmitter acetylcholine by help of acetylcholine receptors except or to be more sensitive to acetylcholine. Coloracetam boosts acetylcholine in the brain, but it does it through a different mechanism of action. Rather than making the acetylcholine receptors more sensitive to acetylcholine, it actually increases the synthesis of acetylcholine from choline by affecting the high affinity choline uptake process. So how does it actually work in your brain? Well, a couple of ways in particular stand out. First, coloracetam boosts your brain's choline uptake by targeting and working with the high affinity choline uptake process in the brain's neurons. Acetylcholine is made up of choline and acetate. This must be available at the ter neuron terminal at all times so that acetylcholine can be synthesized whenever it's needed. Free choline circulating in the blood crosses the blood-brain barrier and is taken up by cholinergic neuron terminals. It gets taken into the neuron by the high affinity choline uptake system. The synthesis um, actually takes place in the synaptic cleft, the space between the neurons as it travels into the neuron. Now the high affinity choline uptake system is temperature, energy, and sodium dependent. This system is the primary means by which choline needs, is needed for synthesis of acetylcholine uh, so that it's transported, transported into the neuron. And this is the rate limiting step of the production of this critical, critical neurotransmitter. When this system breaks down or it doesn't work as efficiently as it was designed, you experience problems with memory, learning, and, and brain fog. Coloracetam affects this process and helps it work more efficiently. In fact, it seems to boost 
the high affinity choline uptake process. Even in damaged neurons, increased acetylcholine in neurons helps improve memory, boosts cognition, and it provides better decision-making capabilities. Now the second major way that it helps your brain is color acetam seems to improve AMPA potentiation. AMPA receptors are affected by glutamate, which work in the brain and central nervous system to improve alertness and cognition. Color acetam works with both AMPA potentiation and choline uptake enhancement. This combination seems to help improve mood, dis mood disorders without affecting serotonin levels. Now, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, is, is the current uh, preferred method in mainstream medicine for dealing with mood disorders and depression. But they come with a list of really nasty side effects. And they don't work for every depressed patient. Actually, less than half. Now, research has reported that coloracetam was beneficial in treating major clinical depression and anxiety disorder without affecting serotonin levels in the brain and without the side effects that go along with disrupting serotonin. That's pretty amazing. So we've got the research behind coloracetam is very limited, but it does show that coloracetam restores the synthesis of acetylcholine, it restores long-term memory, it improves working memory, it relieves symptoms of severe depression, it treats symptoms of general anxiety, it increases choline uptake even in damaged neurons, and it repairs retinal and optical nerve damage. The benefits from supplementing with the coloracetam seem to be long-lasting, even after you stop supplementing with it. So how does coloracetam feel when you take it as a supplement? Even with very small doses, you should experience a decreased anxiety and improved mood. Overall energy levels should go up. Unlike the effect commonly produced by stimulants, coloracetam offers a more relaxed, calm, and free-minded kind of thought process processing. Coloracetam acts quickly to boost long-term and working memory and word recall. And many nootropics uses report that colors are crisper and enhanced, and sound and audio seems to wash through them. Some even report uh, that color acetam enhances meditation. There is an extremely pleasant sense of being at peace with the world. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the research behind color acetam is limited uh, because it was discovered in the late 90s. So it's new, and there's been very few clinical trials done in humans. Uh, most of the clinical research has been done um, on animals. If you'd like to see some of that research, go to the Coloracetam article on Nootropics Expert, and I've got links through to the clinical studies. Um, you'll see things like Coloracetam improves long-lasting, uh, provides long-lasting cognitive improvement and coloracetam improves working memory. So as for dosage, recommended color, coloracetam dosage is 20 to 80 milligrams a day. So 20 milligrams would be taken in two, milligram, two 10 milligram doses. One coloracetam dose in first thing in the morning and one in the early afternoon. Higher doses of coloracetam are based on clinical trials, most done on animals. So when first, first adding coloracetam to your stack, most people start out with much smaller doses just to see how you react. Coloracetam is typically sold in powder form. Smaller doses are often takes, taken sublingually for faster and better absorption. In other words, taking 10, 10 milligrams and stick it under your tongue. Let it dissolve. Since coloracetam is a fat-soluble nootropic, you should take it with a meal containing healthy fats or take it with a tablespoon of extra virgin uh, coconut or olive oil or other similar healthy fat to ensure quick absorption. So for side effects, coloracetam is considered non-toxic. 
It's considered well toler tolerated and safe. Many first time users of coloracetam report fatigue, which is often a result of starting with too high a dose. Now remember, coloracetam works by enhancing choline uptake in your brain. Choline is a precursor to the production of acetylcholine. If not enough choline is available in your system, you'll feel the, feel the side effects, side of, including fatigue. Side effects are rare, but can include anxiety, fatigue, headaches, nervousness, and nausea. Again, the side effects are often a result of unusually high doses of this nootropic. And the headaches from using uh, coloracetam typically happen, happen when you forget to combine it with a good choline supplement. Headaches are often a symptom of a choline deficit in your brain. So, I mentioned earlier, coloracetam is usually sold in powder form. A couple of companies do offer it in a liquid-based, liquid as a liquid, uh, making it easier to dose and to taking it, uh, for taking it sublingually. So, my nootropics expert recommendation for coloracetam is 20 milligrams to 80 milligrams a day. And that's my report on coloracetam. If you want to see links to some of the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for coloracetam, or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video, and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or you want to share your experience using coloracetam, go to my article at nootropicsexpert.com and leave it in the comments section at the bottom of the article. If you want to see more videos on all the popular nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos in nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.